Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and I'd like to talk about hip PAO surgery and why this is a really dumb idea. Now, in 2012, I was asked to see a relatively young guy who was a professional athlete and who had just had this hip PAO surgery, but was having a lot of trouble with the recovery. Basically, this surgery involves taking the pelvis, basically the, the socket of the hip joint and rotating it downward to try to get better coverage when there's a small hip socket. And the idea is that that prevents the need for arthritis. Well, this guy's pelvis was not healing back together, leaving him in pain and without a physical bone connection between his leg and the rest of his body. So what happened to this guy? Well, I recently just found out that he ended up with bilateral hip replacements despite this crazy invasive surgery. Okay, so this is the guy's moving x-ray and I've pointed out where the fracture line is. And this is a very subtle mo movement, but you're gonna see the part that I labeled here that shouldn't move, move ever so slightly as we go through these. Um, and it's just giving and collapsing just a little bit, but it's probably why he still has pain. Again, it's just moving a tiny bit, but it shouldn't be moving at all this many years later. So this guy is six years post-surgery and his pelvis is only partially connected. And he's in a lot of pain. And what's really crazy is more recently, in 2017, a study showed that 70% of young patients who had this surgery still needed a hip replacement over three decades. So they saved only 29% of these people from getting a hip replacement. Which raises a very important concept. If the surgery that you're planning on performing is more invasive, i.e. hip PAO surgery, than the surgery you're trying to replace, i.e. a hip replacement surgery, why the heck are we doing this procedure? So that's all for today. Have a wonderful week. Uh, and for more information on any of this stuff and how to avoid hip PAO surgery, see Regenix.com.